Prior to its official UK release, Olympus very kindly loaned their latest OMD digital camera, the EM10 Mark III, the entry-level model. It has many features normally expected in the Pro model, including 5-axis image stabilization and 4K video. It is with these features in mind that I paid a visit to the Bluebell Heritage Steam Railway in Sussex, where the use of a tripod is undesirable and, of course, an ideal subject for movement. In recent years, it has become increasingly noticeable that cameras today offer the dual role of not only high-quality still images, but video as well. One of the first heritage railways to carry passengers, the line that used to run from East Grinstead to Lewis was closed in 1955 before the Beeching Axe. It is now privately owned and today the Bluebell Railway runs 11 miles from East Grinstead as far as Sheffield Park, also famous for its spectacular landscape garden in the care of the National Trust. Incidentally, this shot of the garden was taken last winter with the EM1 Mark I camera. In addition to photographing trains in motion, the architecture of several stations are worthy subjects for photography. Hosted Canes, situated about halfway on the route, is a fine example of 1920s Southern Railway architecture and often used for TV dramas such as Downton Abbey, Poirot and Foyle's War. If a snack is required on your travels, the buffet on Platform 2 is recommended, but as a break of journey is likely to be of two hours before the next scheduled service, take a short stroll to an overbridge on a public footpath north of the station. This is an excellent viewpoint for trains leaving the station and probably your service on its return journey, so you have plenty of time for a leisurely return to the buffet for another drink. I like to stand directly over where the engine passes and the sound is recorded by the camera without any accessories. For the benefit of my friends who are only too familiar how I travel on the National Rail Network, I went on a class of travel that I like to think reflects my status. It was certainly comfortable, possibly more so than today's Great Western or Virgin, and as I was the only person occupying the compartment, I decided to stretch my weary limbs after removing my shoes. Anyone heard of the Happy Feet Ballet? Back to the serious stuff. Normally, I spot meter, but as there is more movement with trains than landscapes, I switched the metering to centre-weighted and used programme. I started with ESP, but found a lack of control with a constantly changing subject. However, the electronic finder is wonderful for evaluating exposure and in order to avoid unintentionally overexposed highlights, I move the exposure compensation dial to minus 0.7. I relied on autofocus and that performed faultlessly. 
I haven't mentioned white balance. I never use auto because it could be doing anything and sometimes the wrong thing, producing unintentional colour casts. My preference is for cloudy, which is around 6000 Kelvin. It warms the colours slightly, removing any hint of coldness caused by a cloudy sky. The camera was supplied without its 14-42 pancake kit lens, so I used the 12-50 instead. But I was hooked on video, which interested me in the 1970s. Then, incidentally, it was known as Cine, before I switched to commercial still photography. When I tried video on the recent Mark II model of the EM1, I was immediately struck by the improvement in quality, especially when the video was paused in playback. But the most impressive new feature was image stabilization for handheld movies that ironed out unintentional hand and body movements wonderful for panning with the subject. I am pleased to announce that these features have been incorporated into the new EM10, offering something very close to the EM1. Fortunately, I saved my images to JPEG as well as RAW. The RAW images could be viewed on Olympus Viewer, but not Lightroom or Photoshop, as the patch was not available in early September. Therefore, I have used the JPEG images for this production, which can still be corrected and adjusted in Lightroom. Production is in PowerPoint, hopefully not death by, then converted to an mp4 file for YouTube. It was great fun using the new EM10 Mark III, and whilst my professional loyalties are still with the current EM1, I am sure it will find an audience for a more casual market and for whom cost is a major consideration. Having said that, I found its small size excelled in discreet and candid photography and, when not in use, could be slipped out of sight into my pocket.